It's time for Coach's Corner on KCCR and online at kccr.com. Coach's Corner is brought to you by Todd's Electric, James Pharmacy, Lamb Motors, Avera, Hawaii Federal Credit Union, and Edward Jones Financial. Coach's Corner is also brought to you by Graham Tire, Kruger Contracting, CHS River Plains, Gales Gas, Bank West, and Capital City Ford, Lincoln, and Toyota. From the KCCR Studios in Pier, KCCR award-winning sports director, John Winkler. And a good evening as we welcome you here in the KCCR Studios as another edition of Coach's Corner. We'll talk plenty of football as we always do. Talk with Steve Steele of the Pier Governors, Tom Moore of the Sully Abuse Chargers, uh, Stanley County's head coach, Max Foth. And then we'll also have uh, the Lyman Raiders coach and Mike Kiefer as Sully Buttes and Lyman are playing each other this week. We'll talk to both the head coaches of that game. We'll also talk with uh, Coach Kira Swenson of the uh, Pier Governor soccer teams after their win last night. So we'll, have, uh, we'll talk with her as they get set for their quarterfinal match coming up on Saturday. All that uh, on the way here in Coach's Corner. We'll take our first break and we'll come back and have our conversation with Coach Steve Steele after this here on Coach's Corner on KCCR and online at kccrradio.com. It takes hard work to reach goals. It's a truth that applies to more than just sports. It also goes for your financial goals. You work hard for your money. You deserve an investment strategy that lines up with your game plan. Your local Edward Jones financial advisor can help. If your investments aren't getting you closer to the win, visit edwardjones.com or stop by your local peer area Edward Jones office for a financial review. Edward Jones, making sense of investing. Member SIPC. No one likes to have electrical problems, but when they happen, call Todd's Electric at 223-2518. With over 30 years of experience, Todd's Electric can handle any type of electrical problem, whether it's residential, commercial, or agriculture. Their knowledgeable staff knows and understands the importance of your home, business, or ag facility and are prepared to help. That number again is 223-2518. Todd's Electric Service, serving the Pier Fort Pier area. Todd's Electric Service, the line to power. That's a clown question, bro. You're listening to Coach's Corner on KCCR and online at kccrradio.com. Back here on KCCR and online at kccrradio.com as Coach's Quarter continues. Joining me is Coach Steve Steele here of the Pier Governors uh, taking on the Huron Tigers on Friday. And, uh, Coach, we'll, we'll revisit last Friday here against the Brandon Valley Lynx. Uh, not the result that you're hoping for, but uh, st- still a lot of positives and, and a really good football team that you win against. And when you look at size and on paper, uh, you're not going to see a team like that the rest of the year. Yeah, it was a good challenge uh, for our guys. Um, you know, to go against kind of that worst case scenario in, in all the different ways. And, uh, you know, they continued to fight all the way through the game. And, you know, yeah, we came up short. But, you know, at the end of the day, everything that we want is still in front of us. And, um, you know, we're, we're still able to go and achieve our goals. So uh, we found some bright spots. We saw some good things. And, you know, we'll grow and, and get better. Uh, real quick, too, George Stalley was, the, you know, a guy that uh, left the game Friday night, had to go to the hospital. Uh, Everything seems to be okay, but uh, give us an update uh, for him. You know, Wednesday here, getting ready for Friday game. Yep, yeah, you know, he had a concussion. Um, you know, thank goodness that's all that it was. Not that that's not serious, but uh, you know, when you see anyone off um, on a backboard and in an ambulance, uh, you know, that's pretty good. Good, uh, better than I guess what it could be when you see that happen. So, um, you know, he's doing very well. Uh, he's a long ways through the protocol already. So we'll kind of see where he's at. Um, you know, he might might make it in time for Friday. He might not. Um, you know, that is what it is. And, you know, obviously whatever whatever he's able to do is what he'll do. You know, he's not going to be rushed or slowed or anything else. It's just uh, kind of up to his body and, and how it's reacting. So um, we'll see how he's doing. But first and foremost, he's, he's going to be okay, and that's the most important part. Well, and concussions for everybody is just handled so differently because sometimes guys react differently after a concussion. But, but George, the competitor that he is, I know that he was already itching to be back on the field and trying to get back to everything because he's, he's ready to go. He doesn't want to miss any time. He, he is a tough guy. Yeah, it's been a challenging practice week for George just because he's wanted to do more than he's been allowed. Um, you know, and he's a guy that doesn't want to miss anything. And, um, you know, he's he's been there, you know, doing what he can do, um, you know, whether that's just the mental rep side or getting some light cardio in, you know, to the whole process of return to play. And, um, you know, it's just been tough on him to not be able to be as involved as he wants to. And, uh, you know, we know that as soon as he's ready, he'll be ready to go. 
uh, the Huron Tigers. Now your opponent coming up on Friday is the third straight home game. Uh, but what do you what do you expect from the Tigers coming in? Yeah, you know they've got a really big aerial assault on offense. Uh, they got a quarterback that can run around and make some plays with his legs. Um, so I mean that's going to be a challenge in the sense that you've got to cover everybody. Uh, and you've got to cover them well. And then at the same point, you can't, you know, just have everybody cover it and, and not worry about their quarterback. So um, going to be a very big game for everybody to be doing their part. Um, you know, the D-line making sure that they can keep them, you know, top or, you know, locked into the pocket and, and not allowing them to escape. And uh, everybody on D, all the DBs making sure they're running with their guys. And we saw them do a really good job on Friday. You know, Jack Thuey, the quarterback for Brandon Valley, didn't have uh, very many completions, didn't have very many yards. Obviously, the run game worked for them, so they didn't have to pass it so much. But the other part was that they couldn't pass it so much because the defensive backs, uh, the corners, the safeties were doing a really good job for the governors defending everybody and, and pass protecting. Yeah, and, and you know, that's that's really cool to see us, you know, have the, the DBs go out and, and have that pride to shut down, a, you know, really good receivers and a great quarterback last week. Um, you know, the unfortunate part is they just they also had other weapons that allowed them to still get the job done. But, um, you know, really good performance from them. And, you know, I think the guys up front are hungry and, and ready to go and embrace a new challenge and kind of get back in their groove. Well, and, and you know, we, we saw them kind of uh, in the Yankton game be able just to just the defense line just go, go after the quarterback, keep chasing the quarterback. Kind of the same thing here of – you, you mentioned keeping him in the pocket, but uh, kind of almost the same thing of you know uh, unleash the hounds and go after the quarterback. Yeah, maybe a little. I mean, it's got to be controlled. Again, this guy can scramble, um, and he, he's got a good arm. So I mean, if we if we do just recklessly pursue him, uh, you know, we're going to give gaps for him to leak through and you know hurt us with his legs. So we've still got to be very disciplined in that sense. Um, but you know, again, when, when you when you kind of just get beat, you know, I, I think that's where everyone's really excited to just kind of move on and and go out and get that confidence back. Uh, we didn't get we didn't talk about it last week, but uh, coming up here on Friday, a uh, second chance for you personally to to be the wins leader uh, in Pier Governor football history. You tied the record two weeks ago in the the homecoming win. Uh, for you personally, what does that uh, what does that mean? I know that you probably don't care about the record too much, uh, but what does that mean for you to to have that opportunity to, to have your name etched as the the wins leader in Pier Governor football history and the rich history of Pier Governors? Yeah, I mean it's it's cool, I guess. Um, you know, but at the same point, I mean there's there's so many more things that go into to winning football games than anything that I do. You know, and I think that's if there's a cool thing about it, you know, I'm very proud of and, and excited for this whole coaching staff where. You know, there's been a, a lot of people involved in this, and there's some that's been involved the entire way, you know, so I think it's a cool deal for, for the whole group, uh, you know, and I think it's cool for this program and, and for everybody else uh, that's been a part of it. So, um, you know, it's cool, it's humbling, but at the same point in time, uh, you know, it's just it's crazy to think about how many people have played a role. Yeah, and a lot, all those guys on the team, all the guys in the coaching staff uh, that have been able to, to, to be on this ride for the governors, obviously winning the last six state 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 championships and for you this this goal isn't what you want to be at the end of the season there, there's another goal here coming up uh, next month in November 10th yeah I mean and that's that's the reality of it is that you know that's that's what we really want you know we, we want to make sure that we're winning the last game not necessarily every game and you know you want to win them all but uh, as long as you're ending the year on a three-game win streak then you know that's that's really what matters here you know, and, and there's not been too many weeks uh, over these past six years and over the last 20 games that uh, the, the governors are trying to, to bounce back after a loss. What's the difference? Is there a difference in what you see after a win on, you know, going into Monday and after a loss going into Monday? Yeah, I think there is. Um, you know, I think our guys are, you know, they're, they're disappointed and, you know, they're eager to come back out and, and to get the confidence back and, and to kind of show back, you know, hey, we lost one game. Whoop de doo. We're still a really good football team, and, and we're still going to come out and win. Um, you know, so I think that there's a huge eagerness on the part of most of the kids on the team, and, and definitely the coaching staff to to get back out and get another opportunity to go get another win. Because you know, losing's not fun. Um, you know, it's not for anybody. But you know, it's we definitely don't want it to linger. You know, and the only way to not have it linger is to go out and get the next one. And that's the fun of watching this team because you don't lose very often. Uh, but I, I know you, and I mean this in, in all respect, that you're a sore loser, and, and you would agree with me that and a lot of guys, a lot of coaches, a lot of guys are in the right way because you handled the, the defeat well last Friday uh, and, and want to, you know, not pointing fingers at anything else other than, hey, let's let's go be better and get ready for Friday. Yeah, I know someone at home that might not agree that I handled it well <laughs> at, after last Friday, but 
Uh, but again, you know, I, I think that's kind of what you want. I mean, you, you want to have people, you don't want to be happy with a loss. Um, you know, you can gain things from it. You can find positives in it, but you, you don't want to be happy in a loss any more than you really want to be happy in a win. Um, you know, you've got to be finding that way to constantly improve and, and to constantly get better. And I think in a loss, there's just a lot more urgency because you lost. You know, if you won and you don't feel great about it, then, you know, at the end of the day, you can be like, well, at least it was enough today where, um, you know, clearly it wasn't last Friday. So, you know, I think that's kind of the goal of everybody on the team is, you know, hey, how do we not feel this again? You know, how do we make sure that whatever we do, it is enough next time? Uh, talking with Steve Steele here of the, the Pier Governors. They take on the Huron Tigers Friday night. Uh, coverage will start at 6.30, kickoff at 7 o'clock. Before we get to that last question, throw you for a curveball, you know, pun intended, the baseball playoffs, trying, you know, maybe throw you off link here a little bit because of the fact that you don't probably pay attention to, to baseball, especially this time of the year. Who's your uh, World Series winner? Well, seeing, who's, as who's, you went, seeing as you went to baseball yeah. and you brought this on yourself, um, the last thing I've really paid attention to with baseball is this was Miguel Cabrera's last season, and they had a really cool deal for him where um, Spencer Torkelson gave him his glove because he was playing first base at the end of the game, and he made a play on his last play before they subbed him out. He made a great play at first base, and then he signed it and gave it to Torkelson, and, and that was a cool deal. But it was a really neat deal just to see all the – you know, the, everybody essentially in the Tigers organization there to greet him at the dugout and a uh, really cool deal. And, and a lot of the, the memories that I have with baseball, watching the Tigers growing up and involved Miguel Cabrera. So um, crazy to see that come to an end. Uh, and through all that, I think I've recalled buying time for myself to try and remember any of the teams that are in the playoffs right now. I know the Twins won and are still playing, which is a big deal because they never win when they get to the playoffs. So maybe – this is the year the Twins do it, and then the Vikings are just kind of the penance, and they're just going to tank and be atrocious all year. So we'll go with that uh, for no reason other than I know that the Twins are in the playoffs still. Do you, do you know who they're going to play in the uh, World Series? Another baseball team, <laughs> I'm assuming. <laughs> the, do you know any <laughs> National League team that's still in the playoffs right now? Seeing as you're wearing a Cardinal shirt, I would assume the Cardinals are in. They're not. So. Okay, then you're lying to me. I don't know. <laughs> well, we, we, we'll just go with the Twins uh, winning the World <laughs> Series. I like how you took a dig kind of at the Twins, at the Vikings, and then you took a dig at my team, the Cardinals, because yeah. I feel like you probably knew a little bit that they weren't in it. Uh, so, yeah, good, good on you for digging on everybody uh, and and – also talking good about the the Tigers, who are yeah. still really bad all the time. It's okay. I appreciate you, you know, wearing the Cardinals jersey right now, despite them not playing anymore. Well, so I, I got to do what I got to do sometimes. Yeah. Uh, but to go, to go back to football here to, to wrap things up, uh, what's going to be the biggest reason here for the, the Governors to beat the Tigers here on Tigers on Friday? Yeah, defensive, uh, you know, containing the quarterback and, uh, you know, finding some turnovers. You know, I think that's another part that we didn't have last week is getting some turnovers defensively uh, and then offensively being able to run the ball. Well, Coach, I appreciate the time, as always, mostly. Uh, we'll talk to you in the pregame show on Friday, and a good luck against the Tigers. Thanks, John. Go Lions. <laughs> that is head coach Steve Steele of the Pure Governors. We'll return with more Coach's Corner after this here on KCCR and online at kccrradio.com. Ah, uh, why am I so sore? There are everyday moments. Oh, hey, hold the ladder! Hold the ladder! Oh, oh. Yeah, that hurt. And there are epic moments. Slice, 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 Class of 1995! When a moment creates a health need, visit the experts at Avera Orthopedics. We're moving health forward so you can tell the story. Learn more at avera.org slash orthopedics. Helping people. Have you ever wondered what the benefits are of becoming a Wahi Federal Credit Union member? At Wahi Federal Credit Union, we reinvest profits in you. We do this in the form of lower interest rates, higher dividends, and low to no fees. So come check us out or come in at 221 East Pleasant Drive in Pier. Because at Wahi Federal Credit Union, we treat our members like they own the place because, well, they do. Hawaii Federal Credit Union. You're listening to Coach's Corner on Central South Dakota's sports leader, KCCR. You like that? You like that? 
As we welcome you back to Coach's Quarter here on KCCR and online at KCCRRadio.com. Joining me is uh, Coach Tom Moore of the Soybeans Chargers, returning after a bye week as they will take on the Lyman Raiders at home. Final home game of the regular season for the Chargers. That will be coming up on Friday night, 7 o'clock kickoff. And, of course, it's on in Country 95.3, PureCountry.com, and on Country 95.3 Sports on YouTube. And, uh, Coach, uh, it's good talking to you again. Uh, how was the bye week? Uh, how did things go uh, both rest-wise and, and getting better how did that uh, the bye week go for you you know it, it went pretty good for us came at a good time of the season uh we nursed a few injuries made them a little better but we, we got after it pretty good in practice took took care of some stuff that the chargers had to get better at so i, I feel like we, we, had, we had a nice bye week and the kids did a good job and you mentioned to coming at the right time because, boy, this last two weeks, uh, really two tough teams, Lyman and uh, Corsica Stigney. But the the good thing is that, you know, to, to jump up the standings. I know we, we've talked before that you're not a guy that looks at the standings too much, especially because it changes so much week to week. But these are two big games to for you guys in front of you to jump up the standings with a couple of big wins. Yeah, uh, Yes, they are. Yeah, they're two very good football teams coming in, you know, you know, Lyman's coming in, they've lost one game and, you know, of course, go to the, the next week, they've only lost one or two. I think I haven't looked too, too close at that yet. Cause, um, but yeah, our hands will be full. Um, so we, we'll have to play well to, to pull out a couple wins. Uh, but this Lyman team who you play here on Friday, what have you seen from them on film? What, uh, what scares you a little bit about the, the five and one Raiders? Uh, they're a little bit different from last year. They graduated a couple, uh, you know, a couple of their high high end scores. Their their offense has changed quite a bit. Um, they run the ball a ton. They got a couple of really really good backs. Uh, their line's pretty decent. It's a it's a pretty solid team. Well, you know, and obviously Wall is the, the team that beat them, and they're they're one of the best teams in nine double A's, defending state champions. But when you watch a little bit of that film, do you were you able to take anything from that and how to how to stop them? Maybe some of the, what their game plan was that was able to stop uh, the the Raiders offense. I, you know, it seemed like when watching the wall films, like that, they're just they're physical. I mean, they're they're physical with them. That's just a team that you go against is that super physical. It's just it's tough tough to do some things that in practice that works against a scout team or against a JV team. So it's just you know that that's the hard thing to kind of monitor with is is trying to play physical. And that was one of our big pushes last week with our bye week is you know trying trying to play physical. We've been trying to work on that all year. So. Hopefully we can match that a little bit from what Lyman's going to bring because they're they're always physical when you play them. Well, and I know that you you talk about every week that you want to be the more physical team and uh, and you know and I'm sure even when you show the film to the guys too, it's easy to hit that point home and say, here we go. If you want to be the the physical team, this is a success, even more success that you can have. Yeah, yeah. So it, it, when you watch film and it points it out, when we're physical in positions, we made good plays, and also when we played. You know, a little softer, a little slower, and all of a sudden the, the offense person got their hat on, on the other side of you and made their block easier. And just those little things are just, just hard on coaches. And physicality, we can push it as much as we want, but I mean, the player at the end has to has to want to go do it. Again, talking with Coach Tom Moore here of the Soybeans Chargers as they take on the Lyman Raiders on Friday night, uh, their final home game of the regular season for Soy Buttes, as uh, that'll be a 7 o'clock kickoff on Country 95.3, purecountry.com, and on YouTube at Country 95.3 Sports. Uh, you're, it's hard to believe we're in the last two weeks of the season, but getting to the final uh, home game of the regular season, a lot of time you'll be in senior night, uh, whether you honor the seniors or not beforehand, but being that uh, potential last home game where it is for sure the last regular season home game, uh, how special are uh, some of the seniors and each senior class, whether they're big or a small class? Yeah, yeah. unfortunately, this one this year, we, we have one senior. He's been the only football player for, for several years, so... Uh, with Logan Severson, he's he's worked his butt off in the weight room this last year, and just a, a very very good leader for a football team, and, and, a, and a great role model for our school. So um, he's our one and only. But I'm sure glad to have him on our team. You know, and obviously he'd love to have a lot of seniors this year and just have the old guys. But uh, the the one thing when you do is start to, to honor seniors, and it goes by pretty quick. Yes, you're going to miss Logan Severson, but it is really nice to have a lot of those guys that are behind you or that are on the sidelines still coming back next year. Yeah, that, you know that's one bonus. We'll, we'll lose lose a nice football player, but a lot of those guys will be back. You know that was kind of the thing this year, is that I talked about in the past, just having to kind of coach your butt off more this year because of all the youth and stuff. So 
Uh, we've had some growing pains. So, I mean, like I said, after the first one or two games, nobody's a rookie anymore. Everybody's a veteran that has been on the field. So, you know, hopefully – couple of these guys that are this is now their seventh game or their fourth or fifth game starting that you know they'll start showcasing their ability a little bit more so that is the exciting part it, it, it makes for a, a tough season with things in some certain spots but it's exciting to look at the future as well you're coming off your bye week uh, taking on this lineman team uh off of a bye week as a head coach are you, are you uh, nervous on how I, mean, I wouldn't say nervous, but uh, you know, do you kind of worry about a little bit of of how the guy how the guys start the game? You know, sometimes you, are, are you more excited that hey, we got a week of rest, we should be all pent up, ready to go? Or are you worried that you know it, it it's going to take a little bit to get the guys back into rhythm and maybe a little bit of rust to, to, in that first drive after having a week off? Yeah, we we pushed pretty hard last week, so I get I'm I'm not too concerned with that. Um, I know I talked about Harriet Selby as we had to withstand the first two punches and we got kind of punched in the mouth the first two series as they scored. So just, you know, using talking about that, that we have to start fast to, to have a chance. We don't score a ton of points. It can't allow other teams to score right away as either that they dig yourself in a hole. So, you know, we're going to do what we can, to, you know, be ready to go. And, and I'm certain that the boys will be ready to go. Are these games starting to feel and, and maybe talking up more, trying to get that playoff feel to it, uh, especially playing a couple of good teams like Lyman and Corsica Stickney? Are you kind of maybe hitting home a, a point of, hey, postseason's pretty much starting right now. Let, let's get after it. Let's treat these games like it's win or go home or, or win or our season's over. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it's a good push. You know, last year the same thing. Both these teams were with, with, with Lyman and Corsica, very, very good football teams. Again, they're very, very good football teams. Um, so it, it, it'll definitely have a playoff atmosphere with, you know, with, with that being the case, with being able to play against a, a quality opponent. And then one exciting thing is it's going to be like in the 50s, so it's actually going to feel like some football weather. We're getting rid of those 90s and 100s, it seems like we've been dealing with. So that'll be an exciting point to kind of feel like be, be a fun Friday night lights with it nice and cool out and, and have some fun. Uh, say, and, and, and sunset time just shortly after 7 o'clock, under the lights a little bit more and more, from the beginning of the game, not just around halftime. Uh, for and as a coach, I mean, I know that you're a football guy, so you love the cooler temperatures. Here, the pads pop a little bit more when it's a little bit colder outside. Uh, but as a head coach and, and having to bundle up a little bit more, you, you're still excited to, to to have those 50 and 60 degree days. Obviously, you'll take them more than 100 degrees. Uh, but but are, are you you like it to be a certain temperature, like you know 65 or so, or when it gets colder and colder, you're still okay with it. Yeah, I, I, I you know, that fifty to seventy degree temperatures would be is nice. It's nice when the season when you, you start hot, you, you know that's going to happen. Just it's nice to see the temperatures creep down and this year. Just it, it was warm, warm a lot, but it was warm for everybody. So it, it was what it was. But it's just it just you know feels more like football when fall's getting here, and it's just that fifty to sixty five stuff and makes it a little more fun. Everything seems to play fast. You're not worried about cramps. You're not worried about that stuff. So it's just team on the team. And again, talking with uh, Tom Moore here of the Soybeans Chargers, taking on the Lyman Raiders on Friday night at 7 o'clock in Oneida. And, Coach, before I let you go, you got to get that final question. What's going to be the biggest reason here for the Chargers to pick up a win against the Lyman Raiders? You know, it, it is going to control their offense. Don't let them eat, a, eat up a bunch of clock um, with how, the, how they do stuff. And, like I say about every week, is continue to try to be physical. Try to be more physical than the other team or match their physicality and give herself a shot. Well, Coach, hey, I appreciate the time. As always, good talking to you. It's, it's crazy that we're down the final two weeks of the regular season, but looking forward to the, the, the final push of the regular season into the playoffs. Uh, good luck this Friday, and we'll talk to you again next week. I appreciate it. Thank you. That is head coach Tom Moore, the Soybeans Chargers, taking on the Lyman Raiders on Friday. DT will have coverage starting at, or for kickoff at 7 o'clock on Country 95.3 and on YouTube at Country 95.3 Sports. Back with more coaches quarter after this here on KCCR. This year. Most of us already know that Gale's Gas of Pier is the place to call for propane. They offer an automatic fill plan so you never have to worry about running out of propane. They accept debit and credit payments or a budget payment plan to spread out the cost throughout the year so you never have surprises when you get your bill. For delivery, convenience, and great customer service, call Gale's Gas at 224-5518. That's Gale's Gas at 224-5518. At Shane's Pharmacy, your health care is important, and Shane wants to be the pharmacist to take care of you. Shane's Pharmacy will make sure your prescriptions are filled in a timely manner, they will answer your questions, and they will even deliver to your home or office. 
Call 223-9200. Shane's Pharmacy, the pharmacy you know and trust. The number again is 223-9200. Shane's Pharmacy in Fort Pier, proud to support high school athletics. Let me talk to you. You're listening to Coach's Corner on Central South Dakota's sports leader, KCCR. Yeah. Back here on Coach's Corner on KCCR and online at KCCRadio.com. Joining me is Coach Max Foth of the Stanley County Buffaloes as they get set for their final home game here uh, on coming up on Friday, taking on Lemon McIntosh. And Coaches, one, it's good to talk to you again, but uh, let, let's start with last week before we start talking about Lemon McIntosh. A 44-7 win over Timberlake uh, last Friday. What was the most impressive thing over that 37-point win? Man, I, I was there's so many good things that, that happened during that game. You know, our kids played a whale of a game. I think that's the best football we've played this season. Uh, not perfect football by any means, but really, really good football. And we we uh, kind of dominated a, a pretty good team in Timberlake with having a nice year, and they've got some good athletes on that side as well. So it was a, it was a fun performance. Uh, I feel like our defense was really outstanding. You know, we held them to – I think it was 19 total rushing yards over the course of the whole game, and I think they ran it almost 40 times. So less than a half a yard of carry. Our defense was uh, flying around and making a ton of plays. And then, you know, how we responded, we were up 22-0 at, at the end of the first half, and, you know, I told the boys it was 0-0 coming out of there, and we wanted another 22 points on the board, and, and we got another 22 points in the third quarter. So, our offense looked really good. Our defense played outstanding. You know, it was a great game for our kids, and it was fun to watch them have that much success. And it's also going to be good too. You know, I, I, there's teams that so sometimes you win a ball game and get a shutout like you did, guys did last week, thirty six nothing. And then sometimes teams might say, okay, you know, they feel pretty good and, and they let their guard down a little bit. This team, uh, made, I wouldn't say didn't let their guard down, but made sure that they were not going to let the guard be down because you guys came out and played so well and and didn't let anything happen of of just you know, walking into another game, I think you're seeing more and more the Stanley County team knows that it's every single week. We're going to be good every single week and not because we were good last week, but because we're going to be good this week. Yeah, that's exactly it. You know, trying to get our guys to, to live in that moment and to, to not scoreboard watch and, and look around and say, well, this team beat that team and we beat that team. And no, we just want them to come out and play their best football on Friday night and we had a great week of practice leading up to that, and that's exactly what we did. You know, we played really good football on offense and defense, and even our special teams looked really good on Friday night. So hopefully uh, we can build on that success and, and that momentum that we've got going forward. And uh, like I said, our defense flying around in that third quarter was the best it looked all season long. So hopefully we can continue to play that hard on the defensive side, the assignment sound, and if we play like that, we've got, a, we've got a chance against anybody we play on our schedule and, and hopefully going forward as well. And talking with Max Foth here, the Stanley County Buffaloes, you mentioned not to scoreboard watch, so now I'm going to transition into somewhat scoreboard watching, but more so just looking at the standings each week. Are you looking at the standings uh, each week, or uh, you try and keep that off the back of your, you know, put that in the back of your mind and not really worry about it until until it's time uh, for the playoffs to start? How do you handle watching the standings, especially now in, with just two games remaining? Yeah, it's one of those things I just, I kind of laugh, I giggle a little bit about it just because I can remember back to those first years as an assistant coach under Tom O'Boyle here at Stanley County and myself and Coach Edishaw is now the head coach at Wall. You know, we'd be up all night, you know, two weeks before the end of the regular season saying if this happens and this happens, well, then we're going to go here, we're going to go there. And then even the night of the last game of the season, we would have it just, we know where we're going, we're going to go play here. And lo and behold, something goofy happens, and we have a completely different matchup in the postseason. So I learned early that I'm not, not going to burn any of my energy worrying about things I can't control and things I can't uh, I can't handle, and that's something I can't handle. So uh, I've got the blinders on when it comes to that. We're solely focused on Lemon right now, and and that's all we can do, and that's all we can control, and and that's how it's going to be. 
Uh, you know, and obviously when you put yourself at five and one, regardless of of everything else, another two wins, uh, you're you're not worried about if you're going to be at home or not because you know you're going to be at home, and then you start looking at everything else if you're a top four seed and everything like that. But uh, it, it is pretty easy to say, well, if, if you go seven and one, or at least you know six and one after this week, you're in your you're in the spot that you know you don't have to worry about the fact that you're going to be at home at least in the first round of the playoffs. Yeah, and, you know, like we talked before, John, you know that's the goal of our program each year. We want to try to host that, that first round of the playoff game, and, and we put ourselves in a great position right now and, and to give ourselves a chance to do that. Now, we got to play well this week and next week, of course, too, but you'd feel confident at 7-1 and one that we'd be able to uh, hopefully host the first round playoff game and, and then we can scratch one of those goals off the list and start aiming for some higher ones. I uh, say if you're seven and one and not host a playoff game, we we might have to uh, revisit how the how the standings are led because uh, so, or just in fact that nine double A might be the toughest division in football in the entire state in the entire country, the United States. If you're seven and one, <laughs> that that would be that would be wild. But let, let's talk a little bit about Lemon McIntosh because uh, they, they are a three and three team, and you look at some of their scores. They've got a, a three touchdown win, uh, or excuse me, a, a two touchdown win against Dupree, uh, another two point win and then a blowout against Newell uh, but then you, they, they lost a couple of uh, two touchdown games uh, lost a close game as well it, it's kind of up and down with how they play what have you seen from them on film yeah I think coach Anderson at Lemon does a really nice job of being multiple they remind us of ourselves in that aspect they've got a nice mix of okay here's some heavy run formations and then a couple of plays later, okay, there's a diamond formation over here. we got four receivers to one side and one to the other. And, you know, they really make you uh, cover all, all the yards in the field, every blade of grass, and, and you have to do a good job on defense to, to be able to handle all those different formations and all those different looks. So they do a nice job of spreading it around on that. And then they're aggressive on the defensive side of the ball. Which you know, when you're aggressive like that, they're gonna they're hoping they make more big plays than than give up big plays, and and we're hoping just the opposite. You know, we're hoping to use some of their aggression against them a little bit, and and hopefully we can have some big plays ourselves. You know, is, is that something that could open up uh, maybe play action or just in general the the pass game, or is it something that uh, you know if you if you can find a hole or two that. Uh, all all those talented running backs that you have, because it, it seems like now you're getting about four or five of them. It looked like maybe one to begin the season with a couple guys to sprinkle in. Now you got about four or five that can run back there and, and run great. Uh, is that kind of maybe open up the holes a little bit and you can get big runs, or or how does that look with the, how aggressive that defense can be? For sure, yeah, it's, it's definitely one of those things that as long as we're assignment sound up front, we should have the numbers to be able to block their numbers, so we don't have to go too far out of the box as far as what we're comfortable with running and calling as a staff. Uh, and you hit the nail on the head with we've got a lot of different guys that can score from anywhere on the field. You know, we've got a lot of guys that are unselfish as well. And that's one thing I wanted to make sure I brought up was, you know, we just had a very dominant, dominant win against Timber Lake. And we ran the ball so effectively that we only threw four passes throughout the whole game. And of course I got a senior quarterback that, Loves playing quarterback, and, and he didn't have one complaint about it. You know, it's like it's a very special team that's this unselfish that, you know, doesn't really care who scores the touchdowns as long as it's getting that win at the end of the night. And, you know, it's, it makes my job as a coach easy because then you don't have to worry about, oh, I need to get so-and-so the ball here or so-and-so here so that they keep playing hard. No, these kids just they play hard, and they're loving the success that they're having, and, and they're really easy to coach when they're that unselfish. So we've got a ton of weapons. We've got a ton of kids that can make a ton of plays, and it's our job as coaches to try to find the best ways to get those guys the ball. Uh, talk with Max Foth here of the Salem County Buffaloes as they take on Limit McIntosh on Friday, 7 o'clock kickoff at Ole Williamson Field. And, and a couple of things you know, to kind of wrap up uh, here shortly, but uh, one question is homecoming is uh, here this uh, week and, and coming up uh, for the Friday game. Uh, the, the challenges or what have you seen through practice so far that you're that you're happy with the guys that are they're, if they're staying focused even though it's homecoming week because it's easy to be distracted. It's easy to have all the extra fun activities and, and rightfully so with the fun activities, but it can lead to distractions. Are the guys handling it well so far? Yeah, so far so good. It's one of those things that, you know, everybody loves homecoming except for 
your coaches of your football team because <laughs> it's so much fun in the classroom. There's dress up days. There's all kinds of activities. There's parades. There's everything. And it's just it seems like we do about everything other than focusing on you know our school stuff and our our football stuff. So as coaches, we got to really try to rein it in and make sure everybody stays safe and and stays focused. But yeah, I will be uh, just like every year. I'll be happy when. Homecoming and homecoming went really well. So we're uh, eagerly awaiting that. Uh, and it's also your final home game of the regular season. Obviously, you're in the spot to be hosting again in, in the first round of the playoffs. But uh, that final home game of the regular season is special for a lot of seniors, is special for, for the coaches to, to honor seniors, whether you had senior night before, but just a little bit extra special by the time that game comes to an end. Talk a little bit about your seniors and what they mean to this Stanley County program, especially uh, with where the record is right now. Obviously, the job's not done, but just what they mean to, to get Stanley County in and out right now 5-1. and one. Man, we are we are so lucky. You know, we we have a fantastic senior class. There's not many of them. There's uh, four that play a ton of football for us, uh, and five on our team. And we couldn't ask for a better group. You know, it's it's good players, but more importantly, they're good young men and they're good leaders for our football team. And and they've been through the battles. You know, you look back to last year; they were juniors and. And they all, you know, they had a bunch of playing time last year on a team that went three and six and kind of got kicked around a little bit. And, and they stayed focused and they got in the weight room and they, they did all the things that we as coaches, you know, were pushing for them to do. And, and it's really made a difference in our program this year. And, and I hope these seniors know just how important they are to, you know, our Stanley Academy football program and our school as a whole. You know, they're great kids and, and they all got bright futures ahead of them. All right, now the final question here before we wrap things up. What's the, the biggest reason why Stanley County gets a win against the Lemon McIntosh uh, Cowboys on Friday? Yeah, I would, I would say our defense uh, continuing to fly around and make plays. You know, it's been one of those things that, you know, our defense hasn't been in this, hasn't played this well since, you know, back in our 11 man football days. It's, it's really. It's a lot. It makes the game so easy to coach when you know that you can try your defense out there, and, and everybody's going to be in the right spot, and everybody's going to play fast and physical, and, and really go get after people. And, and if our defense keeps playing like that, you know, like I said before, we're going to have a chance for game that we play the rest of the season. Then offensively, it's just like I said, try to use some of their aggression against them. You know, look to throw the ball when we want to throw the ball. You know, look to take advantage of some of their uh, aggressive tendencies and and hopefully get some big plays and some big points on that board. I guess it's also uh, just uh, hate Cowboys week for you since uh, the, the, the Buffs are playing the Cowboys on Friday and your 49ers are playing the Cowboys on Sunday night. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a rough week to be a cowboy, I'll tell you that. Well, I, I, I'm rooting for the Buffs. I don't want the Cowboys to win on Friday, but I do want the Cowboys to win on Sunday. So uh, I hope that you guys get the win. Uh, th- that way, I, 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 I guess, you know, yeah, let me go one and one this week. With the loss on Friday, or I guess two and zero, because I want the Cowboys to lose on Friday. But uh, Coach, <laughs> uh, well, you're, you're, let me get your final score prediction on Sunday Night Football. Sunday Night Football. I'm going to say, uh, let's say twenty-eight. 28- 20 Niners. Okay, all right. I, I the the Forty Niners have looked. They're they're probably the only team that has pretty much been impressive throughout the entire first four weeks of the season. Everybody else. You know, the Eagles are 4-0, and but they've been a little shaky. The Cowboys, who have looked good in three games, they looked really bad against the Cardinals. The, the 49ers have probably, I mean, would you agree that they've probably looked the best of every NFL team? Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think it's it's hard to say, you know, the NFL, the season's so dang long, and, you know, you don't want to peak too early, and I don't think the Niners have by any means. But, you know, the Niners have a lot of, a lot of weapons on offense, and, and that defense is certainly up to snuff, but, you know, a guy like Micah Parsons will make any Niner fan lose sleep at night. So Dallas is a talented team, too. It should be a good ball game. I hope you get zero sleep Sunday night into Monday morning. Yeah. Just just a nightmare of Micah Parsons all all Sunday night long. <laughs> uh, that's, that's fair. I guess I guess it'll be a rough one for my fifth grade math students on Monday morning. Uh, hey, Coach, I appreciate the time. As always, always good talking to you. Good luck this Friday, and we'll talk to you again next week.
You bet. Thanks, John. That's that Coach Maxwell, the Stanley County Buffaloes. Homecoming a week is for Stanley County. They take on Lemon McIntosh on Friday in their homecoming game. 7 o'clock kickoff from Ollie Williamson Field. We return with more Coaches Corner after this here on KCCR. Look, it's no secret that owning a vehicle can cause a lot of stress, and they get a lot of wear and tear on them through every season. Graham Tire wants you to know that you can trust them with any problem that you have with your vehicle. They have fully trained ASE certified mechanics on staff ready to handle it for you. From brakes and bearings to alignments and front ends, let their experience work for you. Over 50 years combined means you can count on them. So if it's time for a transmission flush or even a simple oil change, the only name you need to know is Graham Tire, 421 West Sioux Avenue in Pierre. As community bankers, BankWest employees are deeply committed to supporting local causes, growing the local economy, and creating local opportunities. At a time when you can bank anywhere, we hope you choose BankWest. We'll be your financial partner for the long haul, helping you and your community achieve financial success. BankWest. Convenient. Connected. Committed. Member FDIC. Hey, I'm just here so I don't get fined, so y'all can sit here and ask me all the questions y'all want to. I'm going to answer with the same answer, so y'all can shoot if y'all please. This is Coach's Corner on your home for the Peer Governors, KCCR, and online at kccrradio.com. Back here at Coach's Corner on KCCR and online at kccrradio.com. Joining me is Coach Mike Kiefer here of the Lyman Raiders as they get set to take on the Soybeans Chargers. A 7 o'clock kickoff on a Friday. It'll be heard on Country 95.3, purecountry.com, and on YouTube at Country 95.3 Sports. But as we welcome in here, Coach Kiefer, and uh, Coach, you, you read, uh, you're able to bounce back after your loss against Wall uh, two weeks ago. Last week, you got the win against Bennett County, 44-20. to What would you like about your team bouncing back from that uh, – from the first loss and being able to get a 24 point win against Bennett County? Uh, you know, I think we're, we're handling adversity pretty well. Uh, we, we got ourselves in some, some definite predicaments, uh, in the last two games. Uh, and obviously the wall game didn't go the way we wanted to, but, um, Bennett County, uh, we, we painted ourselves in a corner, uh, both offensively and defense, several occasions we're able to fight back, um, and make enough plays uh, to get the win in the end. Uh, and and now as we, let's kind of go into the Sully Buttes game. Uh, you know, two games left to go in the season. Uh, the Chargers coming at two and four. They're coming off their bye week. Uh, but what have you seen on film from them going into uh, this Friday's contest? Uh, you know, I think definitely uh, a, a, a team that a uh, two and four record. Uh, it doesn't really reflect reflect what kind of football team they have. Uh, they have some good size. Uh, and they have some good skill position players, and uh, we, we definitely need to respect them. And and they they have such a good tradition in in all sports at Sully Butte. So uh, we need to come ready to play, and uh, we need to play four quarters of football if we want to come out of there with a win. Well, and, and you know, I know you maybe you, you look at the standings a lot. Maybe you don't worry about the standings at all. But when you look at records, and and you you mentioned too, Sully Butte that two and four doesn't indicate how good they are uh, at two and four. But when it comes down to the seed points, this is an important matchup to to get a win against the the Chargers because uh, well, where, where you sit right now at uh, in the fifth place spot. Uh, those are seed points that you, that you won't be able to make up at the end and trying to find your way maybe into a top four spot or even a top two spot. This is a, a very important game to pick up. Yeah, you know, um, any win uh, is a big win at this point. Um, uh, I don't really get too much into it because there's so much that can happen between now and the end of the season as far as teams jumping and moving around. Um, but uh, we know what we can handle. And uh, we can handle this Friday night, and uh, that that's all all we can worry about. And uh, if we play four good quarters of football, uh, I like I like the the chances we have. Uh, you know, talking with Coach Mike Kiefer here of the uh, the Lyman Raiders taking on the Slavies Chargers here, seven o'clock kickoff on Friday night, uh, and on Country ninety five point three PureCountry dot com and on YouTube at Country ninety five point three Sports. DT Meyer will have the call of that game. Uh, but uh, you and I have been able to talk last year in the playoffs a little bit this year as well. But uh, for you know, on Coach's Corner, but a chance to to kind of talk a little bit about your team again here. What what do you like offensively about this the six games so far for Lyman and then then also, what have you? What do you like about what your team does defensively too? 
Uh, you know, offensively, I think uh, we got uh, several guys that that are key contributor key contributors in in the ground game, um, and the guys up front have done a good job. Um, you know, we're not putting up <clears throat> massive numbers, but we're able to sustain drives and and uh, run the clock and and win the time of possession. Um, I think that uh, defensively, I think we've made uh, we've won the turnover battle in a majority of our games. Um, I, I do think we can we can tackle a little bit better, and that's something that we're emphasizing. Uh, but we, we're doing a good job of rallying the football and getting nine guys there. Um, I think it's been overall a, a, a real team effort as as far as we don't have you know one guy rushing for 300 yards a game or or 200 yards a game. We, we spread it out pretty good on offense and defensively. Um, you know we're spreading out tackles and, and we're spreading out interceptions and, and turnovers uh, pretty good um, across the board. Well, and how nice is that, too? Because, you know, nine-man football, obviously 9B, you got small schools. 9A, you know, you get a little bit bigger. 9AA is still a little bit bigger. But there's a reason why uh, it, it's nine-man football because the numbers aren't quite there. And to be able to, to spread out the wealth and not just have one guy run the football, one guy uh, throw to to one receiver the entire night uh, – because that you know, in nine man football, that's sometimes few and far between. But to have the athletes that you do to be able to spread the ball out, uh, how how nice is that to make the other teams worry about game planning for it? Yeah, you know, at the beginning of the year, you're not sure. Uh, you know, with the with the crew of uh, seniors that you lost, you're not sure who's going to step up and and what exactly you know how it's all going to look in the end. But uh, we've had guys step up um, on, on both sides of the ball that that uh, you're counting on, but you're not sure how it's going to go. So to see them come through for us and, and come through for their teammates, uh, that's a special thing. Well, you know, last year, and, and I know we we talked about this too in coaches' corner before, but last year, uh, you, you know, your quarterback uh, graduates, you get into a new quarterback, Brad Nolan Camp, uh, your your new quarterback, a, a junior. Uh, what what do you like about what he does, uh, both on the you know offensively? Obviously, the ball goes to the quarterback, other than you know some wildcat formations. Uh, but what do you like about him being able to control that offense? You know, I think he's contributed more on the uh, in the ground game than than we anticipated, which is was a is a pleasant surprise. I think that uh, we can improve our our pass game and our play action game. Uh, if we can take that to the next level, that's going to take our offense uh, another step, uh, another dimension that that teams are going to have to defend. Uh, I think he does an all right job in that, but I know that he knows and and he believes that he can do a better job in that department but uh in overall aspect he, he's done a great job for us well and again as uh, the lyman raiders take on the soybeans chargers coming up uh, here friday night seven o'clock kickoff uh dt meyer have the call on country 95.3 as they take on the soybeans chargers talking with mike Kiefer here of the lyman raiders and coach before we wrap things up here uh, i always like to ask the question of what's gonna be the biggest reason here for the lyman raiders to get a win against the chargers on friday nights uh, for us, it's got to be being consistent on both sides of the ball um, and, and getting four quarters of football. It seems like we have a quarter or, or a, a five to seven minute stretch where uh, we we aren't ourselves and, and we're letting teams stay in games and, and have a lapse and in focus. So uh, if we can get everybody on the same page for four quarters, uh, you know, we're a really good football team and uh I, if if we can do that, uh, uh, I think the wins and losses will take care of themselves. Well, Coach, hey, I appreciate the time. Uh, as always, good talking to you again, and uh, good luck here Friday night against the Slavies Chargers. Thank you. That is head coach Mike Kiefer of the Lyman Raiders. We'll return with more coaches corner after this here on KCCR and online at kccrradio.com. Score big on your next vehicle purchase with Lamb Motor Company in Oneida and Gettysburg, Lamb Chevrolet and Implement in Oneida, and Lamb Auto Sales in Pier. Check out their large selection of new and pre-owned cars, trucks, and SUVs at any one of their locations or go online to lambmotor.com. That's L-A-M-B-M-O-T-O-R.com. Or give them a call today at 800-952-2222. Lamb Motor Company of Oneida and Gettysburg, Lamb Chevrolet and Implement in Oneida, and Lamb Auto Sales in Pier.
This fall, take some time to think about your future. While the leaves make their way down to earth, and the last sunset of summer leaves us with an autumn chill, it's time to grab the nearest foam finger and break up the face paint. Rush the stands with First Dakota National Bank and forget how to blink. All sports are back with jaw-dropping plays, an electric atmosphere, and epic scores. Make some noise with First Dakota National Bank. Open a new account online today at FirstDakotaNationalBank.com. Member FDIC. That's a clown question, bro. You're listening to Coach's Corner on KCCR and online at kccrradio.com. Back here on Coach's Corner on KCCR and online at kccrradio.com. Joining me is Coach Kira Swenson and Katie Berg as the Governors are advancing to the quarterfinals, uh, taking on Mitchell uh, on Saturday. And uh, but, but first, let's talk about uh, Tuesday's win, uh, a five-two victory. It was two nothing quickly, two to one, three two, and then you you put it away. The, the emotions of always leading, but kind of Jefferson hanging around. What was that like? Um, we just knew that we just kind of we had to keep playing hard against them. We knew Jefferson was going to come out strong and not go down easy. Um, the girls kind of got defeated there a little bit when they scored, but we regrouped at halftime, and I thought they had a very strong second half, and obviously just put it away. Well, and being able to score 38 seconds in, uh, you know, how nice was that? Because obviously, you know, soccer, that first goal is always a big one. Uh, you know, a lot of sports, you know, I say you want to get out and lead first. But soccer, just a one nothing lead changes the dynamic of the game. How nice was it to score that early on? Um, it so was awesome. Yeah, <laughs> it was a very odd feeling to see everything that you've been practicing kind of just work out. Um, and so quickly. Yes, and then for them to go up 2-0, you know, shortly after – uh, you just felt like everything was going our way, and so I think that's why that goal that Jefferson got kind of shocked us more than we would have liked. But like I said, the girls were able to regroup at halftime, and they just came out fast and furious in that second half. Well, and you, the last 20 minutes or so after they scored that goal, it kind of felt like maybe Pierce played on their heels a little bit, trying to almost go in the half up 2-1 to one instead of you're playing not to lose the lead. How big was it to to regroup like that? I mean, because that's a long. That was a you know twenty minutes of Jefferson really kind of taking it to you guys and not being able to score that second goal. Just how big was it to be able to get to halftime? And what was kind of said to regroup everybody? Absolutely. Um, we knew that we could pull this victory off, but they just had to do the things that we do best: connecting passes, communicating, believing each in each other. Um, like you said, that last twenty minutes of the first half was a was a little bit rocky um but the girls did a nice job of talking it out during halftime and they were able to connect in the second half it was nice at halftime too because the girls knew what they needed to do to get the game done um we were just there basically as motivators because they've heard it before they knew what they needed to do and they did it well and now you start to look towards mitchell uh and, and obviously being you know they're them being the top seed you know they, they deserve to be the number one seed they, they're a really good team but i, I you look at what Harrisburg or what Mitchell has, and I, you guys kind of feel like you can match up well with them, don't you? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. If we can take away their forwards, we're golden. Get our offense going, I have no doubts. And, of course, you know, that's that's easier said than done, too. <laughs> oh, yeah. Because she's, Absolutely. you know, my, that Maya Mullenmeister is such a <laughs> good player. But how do you do it? How, you know, what, what's the, the, going to be a, the biggest reason to take away, how do you take her away? I think just not having that fear about her. Um, we have a phenomenal defense that's more than capable of shutting them down. We have Jasmine in the middle that can shut her down too. So we just have to play consistently as a team. Um, if we go down a goal, just know that we can score too. And I think this was a great game going into Mitchell. Well, and that's the other thing too is how important is it is that first goal maybe to get, but you mentioned too, if you guys go down by one, it's not the going to be the end of the game right then, but how important is it to go out and maybe get that lead early on? Extremely important. I think it would, you know, heighten the, the emotion and heighten the intensity right off the bat on that team, especially coming off of what we, how we played against them during regular season um I think if we just get that first goal, it's going to change the game completely. Uh, again, talking with Kira Swenson and Katie Berg here of the uh, of the Pier Gunner soccer team as they beat uh, Jefferson 5-2 to two Tuesday, yesterday, and now we'll play Saturday against the uh, Mitchell Colonels. Um, and and an opportunity to get to the state, state semifinals. You guys got to the quarterfinals last year, took on the number one seed and the eventual state champions in the Harrisburg Tigers, and 
was one to one late in that game. Obviously, the final score wasn't indicative of how close that game was. So this is a team that you know you returned a lot from last year too. That you you feel feel confident going into against anybody really, right? Absolutely, these girls are more than capable of taking down Mitchell and uh, making it to the semis. Uh, I think they're all locked in and and ready to to play on mm-hmm. Saturday mm-hmm. already. Um, obviously, we don't want to go down in this game, and I don't think that's going to happen either. This is a great team that is firing on all cylinders, and they can do it. Mm-hmm. Well, one thing too, uh, your your goalkeeper Evelyn Swanson, eighth grader. I, you know, to to go into a varsity season as an eighth grader is already challenging. She's risen risen to the challenge throughout the year, and then you get in the playoffs. That's a different beast, and, and sometimes you worry about an eighth grader maybe being pretty nervous in the playoffs but boy was she very good on Tuesday how nice of it nice of it is to have her in the back of the net mm-hmm. it's so nice it's a big confidence boost i think for all the girls especially as coaches like she makes save after save and yeah, she lets a few through here and there, but it's not just her. You know, it's breakdowns wherever we're at on the field. And she comes up with amazing saves throughout all, every single game. And she has just stepped it up this season and has taken it into her own hands to be phenomenal. And I'm excited that she's only an eighth grader because we got her up until <laughs> senior year. So I'm excited for her. Um, I'm excited that we have her. I think she's doing phenomenal. Um, and yeah, it's all we can ask for, really. And she, you know, she has broken the single season save uh, record, you know, and sometimes, yeah, that might mean you got a lot more shots on you than what Mm -hmm. you need, but she's also got a lot of shutouts. It's not that she has not gotten, you know, she's only getting one or two shots against her game or whatever it might be, not making a whole lot of saves or save percentage is very good. Save percentage has been very, very good for her. Yep. She is consistent in all of these games time after time, and they're not just you know, a few saves here or there. They are huge quality Mm -hmm. saves that are keeping us in the game and keeping us alive. So Mm -hmm. I think that just goes to show how strong she is and how consistent she is. Well, you guys take on Mitchell on Saturday, uh, take on the Colonels and the number one seed. Um, What's going to be the biggest reason for you guys to get the win on Saturday? I think just continuing to play as a unit and with that intensity and fire and not letting up for one minute, a full game. I, I know that uh, it, 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 I love that you guys come on here and, and talk on Coach's Corner. And we all, you know, I say, you know, next week, Tuesday, if you guys are going to the state championship, we're going to have you on next week. Uh, so you, you get the little, the negative of all the positives because I know how much you really enjoy doing Coach's Corner interviews. I appreciate you doing it. Uh, but, but. I want to talk to you guys again. I know even though you <laughs> yep. don't want to talk to me again, you want to talk to me again because that means you guys are in the state championship. Absolutely. But, yeah, it, it is fun. I appreciate you guys coming on and talking uh, here today on Coach's Corner. And, uh, yeah, it, it's going to be a great matchup uh, on Saturday against Mitchell, and I appreciate you guys coming on. Good luck uh, on Saturday. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. That is uh, head coach Kira Swenson along with assistant coach Katie Berg. We'll return with more Coach's Corner after this here on KCCR and online at kccrradio.com. Capital City Ford Lincoln Toyota is serving the Central South Dakota community and beyond with a great selection of used vehicles. Local trades and program vehicles are available. New Toyotas and new Fords are arriving and selling before they even hit the lot. So don't wait. Stop in and find out what's coming. If you've been thinking about ordering a new Ford, stop in and sit down with one of our sales specialists today. Capital City Ford Lincoln Toyota at 518 East Sioux Avenue and Pier. Call 605-224-7378 and visit CapitalCityFordToyota.com. Hey, hey you, are you at a job that is fulfilling, has good benefits to support you or a family today, and retirement goes down the road? If you just said no, listen up. CHS River Plains is hiring operations personnel, drivers, and custom applicators at several locations. These come with a knockout affordable benefit package for you and the whole family. Apply to a job with CHS River Plains and up your benefits straight up. To apply, visit us online at chsriverplains.com or stop in at one of our locations. CHS is an equal opportunity employer. Building a home. It's the biggest investment most of us make in a lifetime. Not to mention it's a decision that, well, you pretty much live with day and night. The quality of the workmanship stares back at you like a reflection. It also affects the value of your investment. Choosing the right contractor is critical. Kruger Contracting is that contractor. Call 222-2523. Quality workmanship and materials completed on time. Kruger Contracting, in a word, quality. 
Call 222-2523. Hey, I'm just here so I don't get fined. So y'all can sit here and ask me all the questions y'all want to. I'm going to answer with the same answer so y'all can shoot if y'all please. This is Coach's Corner on your home for the Pure Governors, KCCR, and online at kccrradio.com. Back at the KCCR studios one more time here as we'll get you out to Milwaukee for the Diamondbacks and Brewers here in just a moment. I want to say thanks to our coaches and Steve Steele, the head coach of the Pier Governors, Tom Moore of the Sully Beach Chargers, Max of the Stanley County Buffaloes, Mike Kiefer of the Lyman Raiders, and Kira Swenson of the Pier Governor Girls Soccer Team as we'll have coverage of, of football coming up on Friday night to the Pier Governors take on the Huron Tigers. We've got coverage of baseball and the NFL both today and tomorrow. And uh, speaking of today, we've got the Milwaukee Brewers and the Arizona Diamondbacks who are currently in progress. Let's take you out to Milwaukee for the conclusion of this game. As uh, you're listening to Coach's Corner, you have been listening to Coach's Corner here on KCCR and online at kccrradio.com. You've been listening to Coach's Corner on KCCR and online at kccr.com. Coach's Corner is brought to you by Todd's Electric, Shane's Pharmacy, Lamb Motors, Avera, Owahi Federal Credit Union, Edward Jones Financial, Graham Tire, Kruger Contracting, CHS River Plains, Gales Gas, Bank West, and Capital City Ford Lincoln and Toyota. To hear the show again, head to YouTube at KCCR Sports for shows at any time. This has been a special presentation of Riverfront Broadcasting Sports, Central South Dakota's sports leader.